Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Marrero, uh, Math Topics. Uh, this video, um, I want to talk about uh, what is the best age to learn mathematics? That's a question that has been haunting me for many years. As a math learner um, and as a math teacher, what is, what is that age? that we can understand better the mathematics um, ideas. I'm not talking about the procedures of mathematics. Um, I'm talking about when someone can understand big concepts and big ideas in mathematics, understanding. Uh, this is um, a particular um, idea that I always have about this. Personally, I do not understand mathematics, uh, big ideas, when I was 12 years old or 13 years old. We can blame teachers or we can blame ourselves or we can blame the curriculum or the way that we receive the information of mathematics. But none of these uh, answers and approaches um, help us to understand why or when we are ready to understand mathematics. So the readiness is about building your foundations. And building your foundations in elementary school, when you are a little kid, or when you are in middle school, or when you are in the high school, that foundation depends too much on the teachers and the delivery of the lessons and your ability to catch up those ideas. I remember <clears throat> that even in high school, and I can compare now, I had no idea what was a function. Uh, I know the notation. I know the f of x. I know the y equals. But the profound understanding of functions, um, it was far, far away from my understanding when I was in middle school or when I was in high school. So I started understanding the idea of the function, that relation between sets, um, when I start learning mathematics at university level, college level. Um, I, I would like that you participate on this conversation and tell me your, your ideas. Where, when is the best age to learn mathematics? Um, I think that as soon as you get older, you can understand better many ideas, many concepts. But at the same time, you have outliers. You have people that they understand the concepts very well from the very beginning. But I, I want to establish a line between knowing the procedures and knowing the concept. Understanding the procedure and executing the procedure is totally different to understanding the concept behind the procedure. And this is, this is uh, the philosophical uh, uh, point in that I would like you to talk about it in the comments below. Uh, what is that for you? What is that difference between understanding the procedure and understanding the concept. And, and let's talk, and pick one particular concept in mathematics. Do you think that a 13 years old, a 12 years old, can understand functions? That they can see them as a relation between two sets? What is the difference between saying by memory the definition of a function and writing by memory the notation of functions and not understanding 
the profound relation between the two sets? And how can we do that, for example, in number in set theory that we see uh, that extraordinary relation between the natural numbers and the even numbers, natural numbers and even numbers. Do they have the same amount of members, the same amount of element? So N, the natural numbers, they contain the same number of elements as 2N, the even numbers. Those ideas... Um, when we are ready to understand those ideas. Uh, this is the conversation today. And what other concepts can be learned earlier or can be le learned late in life? This is today's video. No? Thank you. So, if you have the idea of functions and you don't want to talk about the idea of function and you want to use the idea of the natural number set, okay? Let's say the natural numbers. Okay, that idea. And that, that, let's say that we have the natural numbers over here. N. And the idea of infinity, for example, when, when are we ready to understand the idea of infinity? At what age we understand that idea? At what age you can say that the counting numbers, no? they never end. But also... The even numbers, they never end. And here we have N and here we have 2N. Do they have the same number of elements? Yes, they have the same number of elements, the same number of natural numbers as even natural numbers. Yeah, and how can we write this? We can write it as a... And with this notation, do we have the same numbers? Yes. But we can write it as f of x equal to n. And now is the function. And now is something that I... I see every day in, in, ma in math books. What is the idea of infinity? How can we connect this set with this set right here? And we can pair each number, number, with its double. That's the idea. One, one times two. Two, two times two. Four, four times two. And we generate a nice conversation in mathematics. A very nice conversation in mathematics. And what do you think? When are we ready to understand ideas like this? Without, name, without naming the, the word function. Just talking about sets. Do we have the same number of elements? That set? Some people is going to say, some kids going to say no. No, because we have one, two, three, four, and then we have two, four. So it looks like the, the doubles are less than the original numbers. And you start pushing the idea 
of number uh, cents. One and it's double. Two and it's double. Three and it's double. Four and it's double. In that representation that you see on the board, the students can get confused. Mm -hmm. Can get confused. Kids can get confused. They can see that one set is smaller than the other. But if you put it in a, another notation and you said one and it's double, two and it's double, three and it's double, n and it's double. Now they can see better that we have a relation there, special relation. Each element can be paired with another element. And that powerful relation is what we call later on function. What do you think? When are we ready to understand infinity? Because this is the idea of infinity in number theory. Uh, in set theory. Uh, I, I have right here one phrase from one of the greatest mathematicians, David Hilbert, that says, no other question has ever moved so profoundly the spirit of man no other idea has so fruitfully stimulated his intellect, yet no other concept stands in greater need of clarification than that of the infinite. David Hilbert. Beautiful words. I think, in my personal opinion, that when we get older, we understand better. But how can we accelerate that process, that thinking process? Is the learning of mathematics something that is innate in our brain? That the full potential to understand the abstraction of infinity is innate in our nature. What is your opinion? Can we nurture, can we promote, can we push our kids to understand these ideas earlier in life? At what age? That's, that's the question in today's video. Uh, it's important to understand the idea of infinity, but it's, um, it's, it's important that we stop saying infinity is something that never ends. And we, I would like to say the ability to pair up elements between two sets. I would like to say that the ability to pair up elements between sets, like the natural numbers and the double of each natural number. One times two, two times two, three times uh, two, four times two. And that ability to pair up will pro promote the wake up of the, man, of the mind and the mind is going to start understanding the never end idea. Uh, counting infinities. You, I call this counting infinity. How can we count infinity? This is a way to count infinity using the set idea, the visualization, the mapping the ability to pair up elements. So, 
this is a conversation that we just start today and I want you to uh, I want to read your input um, thank you so much if you like topics like this just put it down there more than welcome to continue exploring uh, the infinity of mathematics see you in the next video